Heavy Breathing features abstract paintings that blend childhood memories with chaotic and orderly elements. Roy uses texture and color to evoke personal nostalgia. He uses oil, pastel, acrylics, and other mixed media in these works that blend memory, emotion, and the physical act of painting. This show is his first solo exhibition in the United States, and it feels truly special. Being in this gallery space, you can't help but appreciate the richness of these works. Housed within Hill House, the newly opened residence and gallery space of art dealer Stefan Simkowitz, the setting provides an intimate and fitting backdrop. The works are collectively termed nostalgia paintings and reflects Roy's connection to his past. In the gallery press release, the artist mentions how he's inspired by everyday things that he remembers fondly, like mint ice cream, bright orange plastic chairs, the scents of the copier at his dad's workplace, and sand and cement at a construction site. His works are both expressive and personal, focusing on the emotions these moments stir up. These pieces do not seek to capture precise recollections of the past, but rather the sensations that memories evoke. While the details of our youthful moments vary for each of us, the way these memories quietly shape us and linger in our subconscious is universal. The gallery press release states that memories are an important part of his identity, noting the paradox of memories being both accurate and powerful, as well as unreliable and deceiving. It's true, memories are not always reliable, and his abstract paintings reflect this uncertainty. Roy's work mixes the graceful and the raw, the dense and the delicate, in ways that create a conversation between opposing ideas. For instance, he draws from warm childhood memories, such as familiar scents and sweet desserts, but juxtaposes them with rough textures and distorted shapes. This evokes that sense of conflict, highlighting how even positive memories can carry uncomfortable or unsettling elements. Notice how some strokes unfold with grace, while others reveal a more chaotic, urgent nature. His use of a variety of materials prevents him from strictly controlling the outcome. He allows the physical qualities of the materials and how they interact with each other to influence how the artworks evolve. Which makes the process of applying them as important as the concept itself. Roy's ability to capture the emotional undercurrents of seemingly mundane moments reminds us that the small, often overlooked details of our lives hold a quiet power. Erasing a flower captures Nick's evolving relationship with abstraction, 
through the juxtaposition of colorful and black and white paintings. The balance between improvisation and planning and the power of repetition. The black and white paintings, which are a new direction for the artist, were based on drawings born from pandemic solitude. The artist describes these pieces as choreographed, inspired by his exploration of geometric shapes and patterns. Circles, rectangles, dots, dance across the canvas, layered through stencils, pressed into place, then disrupted. The act of painting for Nick is one of both giving and taking. He uses thick, layered applications of acrylic, often mixed with marble dust, to create his textured, collage-like compositions. He creates energy in his works by playing with how different shapes overlap and interact with each other. These colorful paintings are more free form and improvisational than their monochromatic counterparts. As we walk through the exhibition, we feel the rhythm of repetition, shapes migrating from one panel to the next, as though they cannot be confined, cannot be pinned down. There is an energy that moves through these pieces, a sense of play and discovery. This show is inspired by the Japanese haiku, a poppy blooms, and reflects Nick's creative process. How he continually builds up his artwork, only to erase parts of it, and then rebuild it, much like how a flower blooms and eventually fades, only to return again in a new cycle. The blooming poppy symbolizes the reward of persistence and revision. The haiku conveys that creation is a cyclical process of growth where beauty emerges from continuous effort and refinement. This work plays with optical illusions, drawing from styles of the 1960s. The repetition feels almost hypnotic. His process involves using techniques like masking, which is covering areas of the canvas to protect them from paint, stenciling and monotyping 
which is pressing one surface onto another to create an imprint. These methods introduce a level of unpredictability because the artist cannot fully control how the paint will behave. As though the canvas itself is dictating the terms of its own creation, it is, in a way, reminiscent of life itself, between what we shape and what shapes us. By employing these techniques, he distances himself from the precision of his own hand, allowing chance to play a role in the final outcome of the artwork. Multiple paintings evolve side by side in his studio, each influencing the other, creating a sense of continuity while also highlighting change. The juxtaposition of black and white with intense color reveals more than just a difference in hues. It reflects Nick's deeper exploration of contrast as a way to express complex ideas. His ability to move between the untamed energy of color and the measured restraint of monochrome highlights his versatility and skillful handling of both techniques. This show presents a personal, yet universally relatable, exploration of everyday life. Kyoko's work is said to be a refreshing departure from conventional artistic methods, offering a look at the small moments that often go unnoticed. It's in this subtlety that her work gains power she transforms the mundane, elevating daily routines and observations into powerful narratives. Sometimes her paintings are accompanied by short, seemingly inconsequential stories. There's an unguarded honesty in these words much like the kind you might overhear someone speaking in public. Like a diary written in brushstrokes rather than words, the gallery fittingly refers to her work as a painting diary where elements of manga, television, and film storytelling techniques are blended. It is an art that does not seek to impress, but to resonate. The paintings have a natural and unpretentious charm. The title of the exhibition, What Can an Ideology Do For Me?, raises an intriguing question about the role of belief systems in shaping our daily lives. Ideologies often guide societal norms and influence how we think, behave, and interact with the world. But these paintings turn inward, asking us to consider if these belief systems hold sway over the quieter moments. In her paintings, the artist captures fleeting experiences and anecdotes that occur in her own life. Her daily observations are offered up like quiet confidences. 
One painting might evoke a smile, while the next leaves you with a strange ache. These stories come from different places, whether it's something she heard on the news, read in a book, or a personal experience. It's in the everyday rhythms of her home that these works take shape while she juggles everyday tasks of raising children and chores. Her use of color is as familiar as it is true. Objects are rendered in their unaltered hues, meaning she paints them in the colors we see every day. The works feel more like a snapshot of a memory, a recollection where certain details stand out vividly while others fade in the background. Kyoko's work hums with a kind of freedom, untouched by the rigidity of convention. Her style, deceptively simple, harks back to a tradition of mid 20th century artists who sought to strip away the presence of formality to return art to something more innocent. She captures the humor, beauty, and occasional sadness of daily lives with a raw honesty that invites us in, and we find ourselves softly smiling, even as we feel a twinge of wistfulness. In Monuments, we peer through a playful, if not unsettling lens, at the very symbols that have long defined American culture. Eli sets the stage for what it means to engage with history. His monuments speak to a generation more interested in interacting with the past than revering it from a distance. His sculptures are something to be played with and transformed. Here, where faces are typically set in stone, American presidents emerge from foam and fiberglass, not as stoic figures set high on a mountain, but as the backdrop to a culinary experience. Pizza, the most everyday of foods, is baked within this sculpture, served to visitors, choosing art with casual dining. History in his hands is something to consume, not only intellectually, but quite literally. By doing this, Eli presents a version of American history that contrasts with the serious tones associated with it. This fallen Statue of Liberty offers another subversive take on American symbolism. A figure whose very name inspires awe. Here, the icon is now vulnerable, cast down, its posture suggesting both defeat and defiance. No longer standing in triumph, it lies discarded, urging us to wonder what has become of the ideals she once stood for. Eli has made his waves across various creative fields, from music and fashion to photography and art direction, using a blend of visual storytelling and symbolic meaning. Power is both simplified and stripped in these portraits of American presidents and founding fathers. Certain pieces are designed to reflect the scale of the portraits they reference. Eli understands the pulse of modern media, where meaning is constructed not only through the artwork itself, but through the cultural dialogue it sparks. 
Thank you for joining me. I'll see you again.